Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. Today we are reviewing a machine polisher known as the Makita PO6000C. What's interesting about this tool, guys, it's effectively a hybrid function tool. What the hell are you talking about there, John? Well, it's got two operating modes, the full-on forced rotation dual action mode um, and a free spinning dual action mode. Let's get stuck into this review, guys. Welcome back to the channel guys, so the PO6000C via Makita. The claim to fame or the interesting thing about this tool is the hybrid function where you can switch from free spinning dual action polisher to forced rotation. Now the forced rotation dual action movement as well as the as well as the oscillation of the machine, the rotation is driven, so you cannot slow the machine down. The downsides of that typically though are that if the machine is biting into the panel, the polishing pad's biting into the panel, because you can't slow that free spinning down, you are gonna feel the machine fighting you a little bit more, which is true. So some people don't like um, force rotations for that reason. This you can click to free spinning mode, so suddenly the spin of the plate, if you like, is not driven. So um, where you're moving it around, creating different pressures and stuff like that, where you might get pushed and pulled around, what you'll get in return is perhaps the plate slowing down or even stalling for a second while you're passing over an area, which affects the consistency of the tool but makes it easier to operate. So you've got a choice before of whether you go for the force rotation or the free spinning one. Now you've got them both in, in one tool. That's pretty cool. Let's go through all the specs of this machine. Right, let's talk about price, guys. The Makita is £232 for this tool only, and that comes with a 150mm plate, which you can swap over to a 125mm plate if you want to. Um, so it supports a 125mm plate as well. To give you an idea of prices, the Flex 3401, the sort of first one of its kind, the, the one that kind of everyone talks about, is around 300 to 320 um, for tool only and the Rupes Mille, the new force rotation from Rupes is around about 430 to 450 and you can still only get that at the time that I shoot the video I believe as a standard or deluxe kit and that's the price of the standard kit so you get a couple of pads and some compounds with that but the Mille is the most expensive then after that the Flex and the Makita is the cheapest of those three kind of brands there are some kind of there are some other force rotation tools out there that come from China that are out with various companies that can beat the price on the Makita. Um, maybe as little as sort of 130 to 150, something like that. I'm not sure of the exact price. Should have written it down, didn't. Anyway, that gives you an idea of roughly how to compare the Makita price rise to what, what else is on the market. Okay guys, let's quickly run through the rest of the specs. It's got a 900 watt motor in it. It weighs, according to Makita, 2.8 to 3 kilograms. I've put it on the scale and it come, come out as 2.92 kilograms. Um, it supports 150 mil plate and 125, comes with a proprietary 150 mil plate and you can swap it with um, other compatible plates um, like this tool has done to put it down to 125 mil plate, which is most people will want to do. It's less of a handful with a smaller plate and that's probably more of a standard size now. Um, it's OPM range, guys, oscillations per minute or, or orbits per minute are zero to 6,800. Um, what else have we got? Cable length, five meters with a heavy duty black cable, which is good. Doesn't It's not prone to coiling. Two modes, dual action and free spinning dual action and forced dual action. Variable speed trigger and, and speed control dial. Trigger lock. Uh, it's got a taco, so it, m it manages and maintains constant velocity, which is important, so you shouldn't be able to slow the tool down for too long for the, some sort of clever computer detects it and adjusts, so it keeps constant speed. Soft start, rubberized grips all over the pad, including the integrated bail. Rubber feet on the underside, so you can flip the tool over and put it down, uh, and it's soft, you know. Um, so you, you want those kind of rubber feet on it, ideally. Um, dust covers on the side of it, so if you're hammering these tools, which they are, they are going to get hammered, 
um, it's going to protect the tool as well and you can take those dust covers off and clean clean them one other very important thing guys this this tool comes with a three-year warranty which is a little bit um, unusual and it's longer than the normal warranty typically you'll get either a two or one year UK warranty but most tools by default if, well, while we're in the EU have a two year EU standard warranty I believe so it's got a slightly longer warranty in it than other tools Okay guys, I'm gonna run through some little standard things here, vibration, noise, weight, and some comparisons with it between this tool and the, the Flex 3401, which is the one I have and the one I know and the one I use and the one I've bought. So it's a, it's a good thing to compare it to. It's the, it's the standard in this forced rotation kind of market, isn't it? So first up, vibration. I'm gonna keep this quite simple. The app on my phone struggled to um, separate them. It put them both in the most severe earthquake quake category. But from using the tools side by side, holding them, comparing them on top whack, minimum whack and mi middle whack, I would, I would give it to the Makita. It slightly less vibration in my hands and you can feel it. It's slightly smoother. It makes sense in a way because the offset on the Makita, the, the distance, you know, they're not mounted in the center of the axle. They're mounted on a bearing off the center, if you like. So the, the Makita has a smaller offset. So there's less kind of this going on and it has a slightly higher speed. So there's more spin going on. So the, the Flex is doing a little bit more scrubbing with its eight millimeter offset. And I think you can feel the vibration of that. I'm not sure if it's, if anything else has an impact on the vibration, the fact that the um, Makita also has rubberized handles over the bale that improve it. But for me, it is slightly smoother than the Flex vibration wise, but there's not a lot in it. Noise guys, I put the, the I've been playing around with the noise app on my phone and measuring them. I'm gonna give you, the, I've done loads of different speed comparisons. I'm just gonna give you the top whack comparison. There is not, really diff any difference in volume with this. I will say the Makita sounds more rumbly where the Flex sounds more whistly and both these machines you would probably want to wear the old ear defenders if you are operating them because um, they are quite noisy. Next up, weight guys. Well, I'm just going to show you the measurements, and I'm I'm not including the um, the cable because I'm trying to sort of simulate the weight of the machine as you would be using them because you're not going to be carrying the whole weight of the cable. The Makita was about 2.92 kilos, and the Flex came out as 2.8 kilos, eight something. I'll over those shots, and you can see the the something. I didn't make a note of it because there's too much to do. Um, there is no. I've got some additional components on the Flex, the Lake Country backing plate adapter system which might add to the weight slightly beyond what flex advertised but those are the weight readings i got with how i use the tool so you can you can compare them not enough there really to give you much so far out of all the things i've talked about so far they wouldn't be critical things for me in um, comparing them although the vibration advantage with the makita is something that is going to be desirable with some people cable lengths guys well the makita has five meters and the cable is superb thick doesn't coil the flex has four meters the cable is a sort of thinner shiny plastic thing which is kind of rubbery and does sort of stick together and coil a little bit. So I prefer the Makita cable. However, let's just give Rupes some credit here. Their Mille came with a heavy duty nine meter cable, which is the Mac Daddy. And, and I'd love to see them all do nine meter cables so you don't have to mess around with extension leads. Next up, what do I feel about the ergonomics of this particular tool, guys? I'm gonna pick it up while I'm talking. It's good. The one thing, I'm, if I'm looking for things to complement it on, is that the tool, doesn't creak, it feels ridiculously solid. Some of these tools, if you pick them up and start talking like with your hands, start talking the chassis around, things can creak and move and rock around a little bit. This is absolutely rock solid. It feels really, really well made. And there is literally nothing on the ergonomics that I don't like. The handle is lovely, the, tri the trigger's lovely. The, this, this thing is absolutely fine. You know, the, the Rupes one is 
massive, which might be slightly better, but that doesn't really bother me too much. The bale is great to grab hold of, and the tool is really well made. On the flip side, because I'm doing this as a sort of comparison, so is the flex. I love the ergonomics of this tool as well. It's a little bit shorter, and this is great to hold as well. But I would not pick either of these tools or favor one because, the, because of any additional ergonomic features. They are both well designed and nice to hold and nice when they are down on the panel. Okay guys, I've been testing this tool now for the last probably about four hours. My eyes are, are dried out. I've tested it with about eight or nine different pads different polishes, um, I've tested it in dual action mode, I've tested it in forced rotation mode, I've been taking out sandy marks, I've been trying to cut this panel back, I've been trying to polish this panel back, I've been putting the flex up next to it and running one set with like the Makita and then running another set with the flex um, and then I've turned my camera on and grabbed up some footage to kind of overlay for the video but I'm not filming the whole lot, it would kill my battery. Um, and I've learned a few things about this Makita. First thing is you've got to get yourself um, a good combo that works. And actually some of the, I, I like using the Lake Country um, closed cell pads with these force rotation tools. And I tried the hybrid force pads and they worked beautifully on the Makita. Um, and I was, I tried some other pads, had no other problems, but had a problem, had a preference for the, the closed cell ones. I gave the Rupes Blue a run out as well, because I was really critical of that when, well, not really critical, but I found it a bit of a handful. But on the Makita, it was really, really nice. Um, and I did exactly the same thing, guys. I know you've got to load up and make sure it's all primed and, and spread so you get a bit of lubrication with it. And I did all that, but I just couldn't get on with it. it some things are so funny. It could just be that I'm on a different test panel um, or something like that. But for whatever reason, the blue Rupes pad worked really well this time around. The yellow Rupes pads, all thin ones, has always been nice for me. Um, I haven't really had any problems with the Makita. The fr I like the free spinning mode. Um, someone said to me, well, you don't really need to use the free spinning mode with it. And I can understand that actually, because really I think you want the force rotation mode on when you're cutting paint. It's gonna be of benefit. And if you're turning it off because you're having a problem with the machine fighting you, you need to solve that problem because it is solvable because there's no point in getting this tool if you don't use it in the force rotation mode. Um, that's the very important thing. Um, you would perhaps use the free spinning mode when you want to just whiz over the paintwork and polish it up where you don't need that consistency and that aggression and you can just use it with a softer pad and, and whiz over the paint. But you could still finish it you know, use the finishing polishes and stuff in force rotation mode. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll do some testing on that because it'll make an interesting video as well. Overall, guys, I'm really pleased with how the Makita tool has been to operate and use. Right, I've made a list of all the really important key points about this video, guys. First of all, if you're in the market for a forced rotation polisher, the Makita P6000C is a viable option that you should consider that definitely ticks the boxes in terms of giving you all the capability that you'll want from a forced rotation machine. Definitely offers you some price point advantages over some of the other premium uh, offerings in that market. Definitely has very, very good build quality that you get from Makita if you ever, ever kind of use their drills and stuff. They're rated, you know, and they are solid, all their tools, and they've got decent reputation. Some of the key things, guys, to consider, the offset of the Makita is smaller than the Flex, so it, a bit in a similar way to the Rupes, it, it works by giving you less os, sort of distance or less scrub from the oscillation um, and counters that by, by actually kind of rotating a little bit faster. So that gives you slightly different dynamics to the Flex and one of the positives about that is perhaps less vibration and a slightly smoother tool. Worth saying that it also spins anti-clockwise like the Flex and the Rupes Millet have changed it around so that their machine is clockwise, which is something that some people might prefer. It doesn't cause me too many problems. One other thing that is important, even though it sounds trivial, is the cable length. The Flex has the four meter kind of red cable, which is a bit rubbery and a bit kind of springy and coily. The Makita has a better heavy duty black thick cable, which 
you know, it's, it just feels a little bit better, but it's five meters, slightly longer. The Rupes Mille coming with that standard nine meter cable is a really good thing for me. And I know there's considerations around the power supply to the tool that's affected by the length of the cable, but quite simply from my point of view, Makita, uh, Rupes have been able to deliver that, and I'd love to see it on the other particular tool. So I wanna mention that on this, on this summary thing. One other advantage of this machine over the flex, other than being a little bit kind of smoother because of the smaller offset, is that the metal shroud on the Flex 3401 gets hot and it's something that you wouldn't want to put your hand on. You know, it won't burn you, but it does get quite toasty and, um, you know, it's you'd rather it was all shielded and stuff like that. It's important for me to say the design of the Flex 3401 is decades um, old now. I think 13, 14, 15 years, something like that. Can't remember when it was brought out. Very old. And they are going to be bringing a new tool out. And I also think another problem with the Flex 3401 is the size of the proprietary plates that are non-standard, 115 mil, I believe. And apologies, but I think the other proprietary plate is 140 mil. And that creates not an ideal fitment scenario. I, I suspect when Flex bring out the new version of the tool, they'll give you 125 and 150 mil option. The Lake Country adapter system for the Flex <clears throat> For the flex tool which gives you the capability of running four inch plates and six inch plates massive plates that adapter plate system has been discontinued now lake country stopped making it it's still available in little places as and when i shoot this video but they've also discontinued the four inch pads for it so that was a nice little feature because those pads work really well but quite simply the tools are better, I think, or need to go down the route of being standard size, 125 mil, 150 mil. No force rotation tool has a small mini force rotation that you can pair it up with, which is a negative with all the force rotations. So if you're looking for a tool, op tooling option, and you'd have to pair this up with a mini um, DA or a mini rotary, which is important to say. There is one negative around performance on the Makita PO6000C, and that is down to the free spinning mode on the machine. That smaller 5.5 mil orbit affects the dynamics of the free spinning mode. And the free spinning mode is a little bit disappointing. If you just take a normal dual action polisher, that'll have an eight meter, uh, eight meter, that'd be impressive, eight millimeter offset, which is slightly larger, but you can notice the kind of effect of that offset a little bit more in the free spinning mode. I don't know if the extra offset helps create sort of momentum on the spin and helps keep the plate spinning more, but that smaller offset just feels like the capability is down a little bit on in the free spinning mode. So perhaps I would say if you're specifically more interested primarily in a free spinning tool and you like the idea of having the force rotation as backup, then the free spinning mode might disappoint you slightly. But if you are looking for a force rotation tool that, that has all of that capability with no limitations in force rotation mode, where you could look to use the free spinning mode just for that kind of final polish where you're less worried about kind of, um, you know, you, you don't need the capability so much when you're just finishing out a panel. As long as you're using the machine properly, the free spinning mode essentially will still work, but it's not quite as good, I believe, as the 8mm offset standard DAs and definitely the 15mm offset where, you know, they work quite well. So that's important to cover in this review as well. It is countered by the fact that the design of switching between force rotation and um, free spinning DA is so well done on this tool. You know, it hasn't got some like big lever you've got to clunk and then lock it into place. It's just a little switch. So it, really, if you have never even used the free spinning mode, it wouldn't matter because it functions so well as a force rotation. Um, that primarily is it, guys. Can I recommend the Makita PO6000C? Absolutely, as a force rotation polisher, it is really nice and I like the little free spinning capability on it. You will get all of the things that you want from a force rotation with this machine and that is the consistency. That is still being able to cut paint, you know, when you've got to do correction, you've got to dig out swirls. For me, a little bit more effectively than free spinning tools, in my opinion, but still without any really of those risks of a rotary polisher where you can 
be using a rotary polisher at high speeds, you can swing stuff around a little bit more. And you can, there are some extra risks with hologramming and stuff. So the false rotations are definitely viable. I personally love them, guys. There's a whole range of opinions about what, which machine polishes you might want to favor, and we've already covered that ground on the channel. So overall, guys, been really good. Um, I just want to say thanks again to uh, Mark Leddy for sending it in. The tool is available from Autopia in, if you're based in Ireland, where it's all kind of in euros as well. Um, I found the tool for £232, and I'll put a link for that in the description for, for if you're paying normal pounds, you know, the rest of the UK. Um, as always, with any tool, shop around, see if you can find the best price, guys. And thank you very much for watching this video. Really enjoyed getting my hands on this one. It is a very good tool. So uh, let me know in the comments, guys, if you've, you've used the, the Makita and what your thoughts of it are. Let me know if you're on the market for force rotation and what you think generally of force rotation and what you think about this concept of a hybrid tool and how much use that is to you. Um, I'll see you soon on the Forensics Detailing channel. That's, a, that's all for this one, guys. Thank you, bye. <laughs>